Have the Legion of Doom done the impossible? Have they snuffed out the light of justice as we know it? How will the heroes ever hope to come back from this defeat? Well, let's hop into the pages of Justice League issue number 35 and find out. So, picking up from where the last issue left off, Apex, Lex, and Perpetua had broadcast their message of doom throughout the known multiverse, and people are going nuts, like literally. That symbol up in the sky that we've been seeing in all the different DC books right now acts as one giant psychic amplifier, making everyone feel their darkest, most primal human emotions. It's gotten so bad, they're defacing and stealing from the front yard of the Hall of Justice. Oh man, those lawn ornaments are gonna fetch such a price on eBay, you just know it. Now the rest of the team that has returned from the past and the future are still licking their wounds right now. They're lucky they weren't in space with Hot Girl, which means they're not dead or dying right now. Starman, however, is very much dead, and gone with him is their little piece of the totality. It's all turning into a real disaster, and when I say disaster, I mean it in, like, its original term. Because dis literally means bad, and aster literally means star so this is a straight-up bad star situation. Batman knows it's only a matter of time before Perpetua and her forces decide to come a-gunning for Earth, and because of that, he wants all hands on deck to defend the planet until the last man. And this isn't just Earth that's in trouble here. Literally every Earth in the multiverse is at stake right now, so all the different members of Justice League Incarnate have to get back home to batten down the hatches. Now, how powerful is Perpetua, you might be wondering? Well, she can wipe out entire universes like they were nothing, and to really, you know, shake out the cobwebs on her whole cosmic genocide bent, she decides to turn her wrath to, get this, the Earth belonging to the Gotham by Gaslight Batman. Her decree is as follows, your Earth is confusing and unnecessary, and because of that I'm going to destroy it. Also, your animated movie was a poor adaptation, but you know what, that's neither here nor there. But just because Perpetua can wipe out a whole world, she can't do it all the time. Not yet, anyway. She's still regaining her strength. And wouldn't you know it, that's where Apex Lex comes in. He's going to actually lead the forces of Perpetua, the other Apex Predators, the weird human-Martian hybrids, as they spread across the known multiverse, conquering and destroying any Earth that still holds out clinging to justice. And when that's all said, and done, the turncoat anti-monitor can start building new worlds that Perpetua can reorder, in doing so creating the ultimate perfect multiverse. Why at this point Perpetua is so powerful and her victory so assured, the only thing that could stop her is maybe late intervention by the presence. After all, that's what happened last time with the Raptor. It was Hawk Girl Kendra Saunders who was actually supposed to take the place of the Raptor this time around, but she let her anger get the best of her and tried to kill Lex for what he did to Martian Manhunter. Now she's on death's door and it's up to Shane, her and John's son from a weird alternate universe to steer them back to Earth. But now Perpetua has her eyes trained on Hot Girl and it looks like she's not going to be getting back to Earth that simply as the comic comes to a close. And so that was Justice League issue number 35 everybody and it was a fun little exploration into how totally boned everyone is. I don't know if it's absolutely necessary, I kind of got that feeling already throughout this series. But when it worked, it worked and this story was peppered with a lot of fun little references and in-jokes like Catman being one of the people who looks up and sees the universe about to be destroyed. Bet you didn't think he would come up here. This issue once again reiterates the importance of Hot Girl, Martian Manhunter, and a lot of the other second stringer Justice League who, for all intents and purposes, who are what this run has been about. And mark my words, when it's all said and done, those characters are probably going to end up making all the difference in the world. Overall, I'd give this a 7.5 out of 10. Enjoyable, but definitely not my favorite favorite issue in this series. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cave Joel again, and if you're seeing me right now, it means you watched to the end of the video, of which I will always be appreciative of. It really helps with retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. If you really like my work, you can check me out on social media. I have links down in the description of the video you're watching right now to all my different socials. I got the Twitter, I got the Instagram, I got the Facebook. I'm very easy to be reached, and if you follow me there, you can be the first to know about when a new video goes live. And with that, I will bid you all adieu. Bye-bye.